If today you took a thousand dollars of your hard-earned money to the bank for self-storage and then came back to it 10 years later, you wouldn't find it as a thousand dollars. You'd find that it is way less than the thousand dollars you placed there. Most people have been placed under this form of trance where they believe that banks are there to keep their money safe. In all reality, we couldn't be further from the truth. To be straight and clear, Keeping your money in the bank is a terrible idea that will run you into a sorry state. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you why, and I'll also be telling you what you should be doing instead. So stick around right through to the very end. So first, you need to understand that banks are a business. They are not a charity. They are not there to just store your money for you and keep it safe. No, they are there to make money. So first of all, how do banks make money? How do they run their businesses? They make their money through very many different ways. The first one is fees. Have you thought about all the types of fees that you actually do have on maybe just one account? Yeah? Imagine all the fees you pay. For example, usually if you're withdrawing money, whether it's over the counter or through the ATM machine, you're going to have a fee. A very small fee if it's, for example, the ATM machine. If it's over the counter, it's a bit of a bigger fee, but there's still a fee. If you're doing any form of transaction, maybe you're sending money to someone, maybe you're sending money to, I don't know, your mobile account, whatever way you're doing it, you're going to be charged a fee. If you're processing a loan, before they even give you the money. They're going to charge you a fee simply for processing the loan. Then you'll have monthly charges on your account. Even if you just place money on your account, for example, someone who places their money and they leave it for one year, they're not transacting, they're not doing anything, they'll be charged maybe monthly or annual charges on their account simply because they have money there, simply because they have placed their money in the bank. Maybe if you have an overdraft, you'll be charged. If, for example, you have a credit card and you're supposed to be making your payment at a particular time and then you pay it late, then you'll be fine. You'll be charged a fee for all that. So there are all kinds of crazy fees that banks charge. And if you can imagine how many bank accounts are there in that bank, you know, with all the people who have bank accounts over there, it actually turns out to be quite substantial income. Another one is interest on loans. So you see the main business for banks is usually lending money because the biggest asset that they actually do have is money. So you get your money, take it to the bank. What do they do? They loan that money out to someone at exorbitant interest rates. I mean, you go to the bank and you want a loan, they'll give you a loan at maybe 20%, you know, 15, 14%. If you're a very good negotiator, maybe Maybe you'll manage to do a seven six percent but still that's quite an amount of money so for banks that's the biggest you know business outside there the loan departments in the bank are the ones that are pushed the most because they're the ones that bring in the most money into the bank then also banks do investments you know think of all kinds of investments that you would do for example banks a lot of banks invest in stocks invest in real estate, they'll invest in mutual funds, they'll invest in bonds. And these are investments that are going to bring good return because a lot of them are quite stable and because banks have people who are employed to study the markets very, very well, whether it's stocks, whether it's, you know, bonds and all those kinds of things, they have people employed to make sure they study these things to detail to ensure that they have the very best investment options. Usually they'll invest in steady opportunities where they are certain that they're going to have, you know, a return on their investment. So that's another way that they make money. They invest your money that you take to the bank and invest it in all these kinds of other investments. And then banks are also occasionally utilized by wealthy people to do asset and wealth management. Usually it won't be for people who don't have too much money. They'll deal with people who have a lot of money and assist them with wealth management. So that's another way of them earning income. So have you ever wondered what banks actually use your money for? You see, for a lot of people, they imagine that when they take their money to the bank, the money is picked up and stored somewhere. So they imagine that in the banks there's a lot of money you know everyone's money that's taken over there is stored somewhere and there's a lot of money in the banks and that could not be further away from the truth actually banks are even not mandated to keep even one percent of your money well it depends on the country for some countries it can be about ten percent for some countries there's even no mandate there's nothing like for every person you should keep this percentage of money physically at the bank yeah they are allowed to have nothing of your money at the bank and simply utilize it. So usually what happens is that you'll take your money, let's say you take, I don't know, $500,000 of your money to the bank. As soon as you take the money to the bank, the next day or the next hour, someone comes and they want to borrow money, they want to borrow 500,000 as a loan. They'll just get this cash, 
give it to this person and you know they'll do a deal whether it's interest let's say 13 percent interest so this person will have to pay back 13 percent interest so what has happened is that the bank has now utilized your money to make money and then what happens is that once this person pays back their interest you know how much they pay you as interest per year by the way let's just calculate it yeah so let's imagine you get a thousand dollars and take it to the bank and you're taking it to the bank to store it the next hour or the next day someone comes in and they're like they want to borrow a thousand dollars from the bank the bank will very willingly and very easily give this a thousand dollars over to the person quite easily and then of course it will be on an interest let's say 15 percent interest yeah which is actually quite conservative because depending on your bargaining power depending on your history your records in terms of paying it could even be higher than that it can be 18 sometimes 20 percent in terms of interest if you're really good at it like we said you can come down to maybe the seven percent and what you're doing yeah so they lend it out at 15 percent so what that means is that the person who has borrowed is going to pay 1150 dollars back to the bank but have you ever imagined what the average interest rate on saving accounts is it's about 0.57%. That's the average interest rate per annum on your saving account. So what that means is that you've taken your thousand dollars to the bank. If you go back in one year's time, then with 0.57% interest, that means you are supposed to receive $1,005.70, i.e. you've earned $5.70 while they have utilized your money to make $150. Isn't that crazy? Really, really crazy. Crazy. And then think about it, with all the fees that you've been paying over the year, even if you haven't been transacting at all, you have monthly charges, most likely you're going to be in negatives. So you've got an interest of $5, but then you're going to have maybe charges of maybe $15 off your account. So what are you going to end up with? About $990. So you place $1,000 and at the end of the year, you're going to come back and you have $990. So in all reality, despite the fact that the banks actually make money using your account, they actually take away money from you. They literally rob you to use your money to make profit. Now you'll be thinking to yourself, well, Dr. Daniel, in all reality, when I pick up my phone and I'm looking at my, you know, my banking app or whatever, I can clearly see that there is money on my account. Every time I go to the bank, there is money on my account. Well, that is simply digital figures. You know, it's, it's, it's just figures. In reality, there's no money in the bank account. It's simply a note that, hey, you gave us this amount of money and if you ever need it, we'll be able to give you this amount of money, yeah? But it's not like that money is there. Imagine if all the people who save money in that bank decided that on one particular day, they're all going to go and withdraw their money from the bank. There'll be a crisis in the bank. Why? Because the bank doesn't have the money. It doesn't even have 10% of the money that has been saved in the bank by all the people. Yeah, it doesn't. So what that means is banks never really keep their money. They just go and utilize the money. Now, why can't I ever keep my money in the bank? I'll tell you. First of all, because of the charges. The charges are really crazy. Just imagine how much of our hard-earned money is actually taken by governments. For example, every time someone works, you know, if I'm working and I'm getting a salary, I'm earning a salary, 30% of it is you are going to be taxed as pay as you earn. Yeah? So 30, between 30 and 40%, depending on where you are, what tax bracket you fall in, you're going to be charged maybe between 30 and 40 percent and then every time you make purchases whether it's you know utilities things that you need to use at home you're going to be charged in one small way or another whether it's you know VAT, some form of taxing so in the end you end up paying maybe 50 percent of all money that you earn you're actually utilizing it to just pay taxes and then after that you take money to the bank to also have it charged, yeah? Money that you could actually utilize now to actually develop yourself. You take it to the bank and they are charging you for simply storing your money. Crazy! Second thing is stress. Banks can be quite stressed. If you imagine that someone has your money, you know, you're given someone, let's say a thousand dollars of your money and they're actually utilizing your money to make profit. They're investing it, loaning it out to people to make profit. These people should be treating you like gold. They should be treating you as, you know, this cool investor that they have. But they don't give a damn, yeah? You'll find people People making lines personally I've been to the bank many times and they can really stress you they make you make lines uh, you know you would imagine that they would want to serve you as quickly and easily as possible to let you go away but they let people stand in the sun they let people stand in the rain they'll make you wait you know f I don't know for whichever manager really stressing you as much as possible you would imagine that maybe banks would make everything quick and easy that you never ever need to go and step in the bank a lot of times their mobile 
platforms can also be really terrible. Their internet platforms can be really, really terrible. So a lot of times you notice you have to go to the bank or you have to make phone calls. If they are taking my money, then they should treat me like a boss because they are utilizing my money to make money. So for me, it really stresses me and I don't like the fact and the idea that they stress me when they are using my money. The third thing is that there is really no equality in banks. Yeah, Totally no equality. You would imagine that if you are two different people and you want to go and borrow money from the bank, the interest rate should be flat. If it's a 7%, let it be a 7%. But then they take advantage of people. If I go and I don't have very good negotiation skills, I could easily pay an 18%, 20% in terms of interest rate, in terms of borrowing. And then someone else who has a good credit score will come and, you know, they'll be given even a 1%. Yeah, I've heard that people like, you know, Elon Musk, people like Jeff Bezos, people like, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, these guys go and get loans from the bank at 1, 2%. Can you imagine? That's really crazy. And usually, the richer people are the ones who get to get these really low, nice interest rates. So I don't like the fact that they are really unfair and take advantage of people who even have less money. And finally, number four is inflation, yeah? Inflation. So if you kept a thousand dollars of your money in the bank and never ever touched it, and then came back to it one year later, it has lost value, depending on the rate of inflation. Even if there was no charges, no nothing happening on your account, if you left a thousand dollars and came back and picked exactly a thousand dollars from your bank account, if inflation is happening at three percent, then you've lost three percent of the value of your money. So literally, storing money in the bank, if it's not being utilized, if it's not developing greatly, is simply losing money, it's simply wasting money. Now, of course, despite my hatred for banks, I still do use banks in a minute way. And the main way that I actually do use banks is for savings, for emergency savings. Because unfortunately, they are the quickest and easiest way for you to access your money in case of an emergency. So what I do personally is that I ensure that on my account, I have about six months of emergency expenses, just in case something happened, you know, in case I got ill, in case, you know, an accident or just something. I want to take time off and uh, I'm not able to make money. You know, you never know what happens in life. At least six months of emergency expenses, money that I can utilize and not be stressed, but you know, I'm cutting down on my costs and everything, six months, yeah? So that's an emergency expense. I try to make sure that I'm not having more money than that stored just there in the bank because if then I'm doing that, then I'm wasting the rest of the money. If I had another way of keeping this money, uh, I would certainly do it. If I could keep it in cash or my home or somewhere, I would certainly do it. But it's just too risky to just keep the money in cash. So unfortunately, I have to take it to the bank. So then, what do I do with my money? And what do I advise you to do with your money? I advise you to do exactly what the banks are doing. But in this case, you keep the profit. You see, the banks take your money, utilize it, and they keep the profit. They actually charge you to use your money because, like we've already said, at the end of the year, if you've only taken a thousand dollars, you're only going to get back nine hundred ninety dollars. So they charge you to actually use your money. But if you can decide to use the money yourself to actually earn money, i.e., do exactly what the banks are doing, I don't know why. For a lot of people, they just don't see this. A lot of people don't want to risk their lives. I mean, the banks risk it. Well, it's understandable that the banks can do it because they hire the very best people at everything, at investing, doing loans and everything. They hire the very best to ensure that they get their money back. But you can also learn. There is no limitation on how much you can learn. Impossible. There is no limitation. You can learn anything, whether it's business, whether it's investing, you can learn all these things. As you might understand, if you've watched me before, I'm personally very biased towards business. Why? Because I've done business before in my life and I can 100% tell you that businesses can make you money yeah unlike some forms of investment where you'll probably get back you no know, five six seven percent of your money every year for a business you can get back a hundred two hundred five hundred percent of what you have invested in the business over the year of course businesses are risky but the riskier something is the higher the earning so because of that i'm very well invested in businesses it's understandable that people might think that a business might fail and it's because of that that i've actually made a video on this channel a link to that video in the description about how to start a business that can never fail but if you can just get that money that you are planning on placing in the bank and go and invest it 
in a business and then do your very best take due diligence to ensure that you research as much as possible learn about businesses as much as possible don't just be like anyone else who is like well i want to start a business i'm going to be doing a business but learn about it as much as possible then you will ensure that you actually get great returns then you ensure that your money is working for you your money is not working for other people if you have this money you take it into your business it's going to bring you back 100 200 300 percent at the end of the year also you can do all the other things that the banks are doing. You can invest in stocks. You can invest in bonds. You can invest in mutual funds. Just try your best to make sure that you learn and understand as much about investing as possible. You know, there's a lot of YouTube videos that can do that. You can go and do seminars. You can do and do a lot of trainings. You can get personal financial advisors to ensure that they train you on these things. Yeah, because you can learn just like the banks learn and invest in financial people. You can invest in that and then just make sure that you're not wasting your money. Money, but you're having your money work for you and grow you and ensure that well, you get richer and of course another option which you can invest in is for example land property a house but investing in these can actually be quite a terrible idea if you haven't understood and learned particular things because they tie up your capital they tie up your money yeah so you need to kind of understand exactly why you're doing it and how you're going to be doing it so i've actually made a video i leave a link to that video right here about what you should know before you decide to buy land don't buy land before you watch this video catch you very soon with another video lots of love bye bye